communicating when you know you're in this will probably be the loudest place you guys have played? Uh, well, it's, it's very beneficial for the defense definitely going on the road because when we play home, they, we try to give the opponent team's offense uh, a lot of noise and stuff like that so they can't communicate. So now when we go on defense, it probably won't be as loud um, besides when they make plays and stuff like that. So like that's very beneficial for us as a defense because now we can actually uh, – maybe one, two times yell to each other and actually be able to hear it. But uh, once the play starts, I don't think anybody or nobody's going to hear anything in that stadium. Is it hand signals you guys are working on? What's kind of the key to, to kind of communicate when the noise is there? Uh, just uh, normal, um, sometimes hand signals, sometimes just communicating, talking, to, just making sure that everybody gets the call and knows the call. So uh, we all make sure to get the, the call from the coach and then once we go from there and then play and make our checks, just making sure everybody knows the defense. So. And then from there, like the little small checks, we just uh, either talk to each other or just uh, give hand signals to. Communications for everybody really said has been the key to this defense this year. Is that mm -hmm. fair to say that communications may have been the key that's kind of brought this thing together? Yes, communication and then the ability to be able to, to, to overcome adversity mm -hmm. and then work together as one and doing and each person doing nail 1%. And I think that's what's been so beneficial to our defense this year because everybody's doing their job to the best of their ability. And when you put that together, that makes a great defensive effort. You guys faced one of the better quarterbacks in Montez the other week, but now Jacob Easton's kind of that next level up. What have you seen from him so far this season? He's a beast. Um, he, I played against him uh, one time in, in high school, three seven on seven, uh, and at that time point, he showed me why he was the number one quarterback in the country um, in high school. And right now, he's showing me why he's able to go first, project the first round, because he, he's what six six. He can throw the ball probably out of the stadium if he wanted to. Uh, he can put a zip on it. Like he can do a lot of things that a lot of quarterbacks can't do. Uh, and, and to me, uh, he's uh, he's very similar to Herbert. So it's just like. The certain throws that Herbert can make, I know that he probably can make too because they're just that talented. You guys excited for that challenge? Yes, very excited. It was a seven on seven. Did you play against him down uh, in California? Or was it was one? um it was in Vegas for the national seven on seven tournament. I played for Ground Zero. He played for FSB. Do you remember kind of him and sort of the I mean, there are throws that he made? It sounds like you can kind uh, of still visualize what he did then. Uh yes, I have pretty good. I remember he uh he made um we started off the the the, the game 13-0 and then. He had came back, settled his offense down, and just started making throws to where, even though his receivers was covered, he was putting, he was threading the needle. And I was just like, wow, like, this is what the number one quarterback in the country looks like. Who won? Uh, we ended up winning by one point. You guys have definitely fit off the atmosphere at Austin Stadium all season long, but now going to quite a hostile ground. What are you guys expecting from the Washington faithful? Uh, it's going to be mo it's gonna be very loud. Uh, a lot of crowd noise. Um, but we just have to be able to focus and do our job and focus on us. Because as long as we do that, no matter what they do, they like they have to. They, we have to beat ourselves, and and same for them. They have to beat themselves to to lose. We're both two good teams, both two dominant programs, two powerhouses in the north. So we have to make sure that that we got to do the little things right. Because this is a team you can't make those little minor errors against because they cost you the game. Because this is not a team that we should, should, should blow out or nothing like that. This is a team that's going to come in and give us a fight all four quarters. No matter what, they're well coached just like us. They have great players just like us. So we have to go in there ready for a dog fight because that's what it is. Have you told anything specific to the young guys in the secondary? I mean, obviously, Verone McKinley had a big game against uh, Colorado, but Washington, is there anything specific you're telling the younger guys? Um, I just tell them to make sure to focus on, focus on doing what you have to do. Um, and, and do the little things right. Keep doing the little things right. Watch film. Do the extra things because at the end of the day, that's what's going to separate you. It's not. It's not about how you play one game. It's how you consistently play. Barone's the only guy out of your group that didn't start or play much last year. What has he done to, I guess, gain the trust of this veteran group in the defensive back group? Uh, he just just making plays, being able to communicate, being the safety that we need him to be, vocal, loud, and, and knowing his job. Um, that's the main part on this defense for anybody. As long as you know your job and know what you have to do, you can play in this defense. And, and he did that. And then he just started making plays. And once you know your job and start making plays, that's when you start gaining not just the trust of your others, but your coaches too. Was that something that he developed throughout the offseason in terms of that trust with you guys? Or is that something he's continued to build throughout this season? He, he's continuing to build it. Um, and he's getting more and more trust from every single person. Um, it started in the offseason. He gained weight uh, by the time spring ball came. So he was able to play at another level in spring ball. And then it went to fall camp. And then now it's here. And now everybody gets to see it, not just us. No, you guys have done a pretty good job for going on a year now of containing number one receivers. This is a team that's really relying on their number one receiver. How you're trying to contain Aaron Fuller in this game? You just got to be, you got to be disciplined within our technique because he's he's a very good receiver. Uh, 
he's he's you can't tell me uh, when you list the top four or five receivers, maybe even less than that. In the Pac-12, you don't mention his name. Um, and then if the best outside of Jacob Ridden, I say you, the only other tight end that's truly been mentioned a lot um, is Hunter Bryant. So we have to be able to to focus in and key on our techniques when whoever matches up with him or lines up with him or if he's in the zone, make sure we know where he's at at all times because those two are playmakers. And when you get the ball in their hands, they, they, do, they do some special stuff. You guys, as a unit, I've obviously seen a lot of success. What do you guys got to do to keep that going throughout this, you know, tough stretch for the last uh, season? We are we are very competitive, and and we want to we want to create a defense to to where everybody wants to be or looks up to, and then not just think of Oregon. Oh, the flashy uniforms. Oh, this and that. You think of oh no, they're not the offense isn't just high power, but they also have a good defense too, and not just a good one, one of the best in the country. And that's what we've been striving for since freshman year and, and now we're finally able to do that and, and we're trying to take it and run with it. We're not we're not settling for mediocrity and we're not settling just to be here. We want to be better. When did when did Verone start to make an impression on you guys? Uh spring ball. <coughs> um it was spring ball. He started to make plays at nickel and then the biggest the biggest shocker to me and the biggest jump is how, how easily he was able to adjust from nickel to safety and he did that easy and it was really just a switch between him and Vaughn and he's just been able to continue to make plays and it start the Auburn week when we were in practice, he probably had like five or six picks. So it just showed that he knew what he was doing and he knew how to do his job. Why, why, why is that best for this defense right now, being able to kind of have the interchange between Javon and, and Barone and, and having Javon in the nickel? Because uh, uh, I, uh, I feel Javon, um, Javon plays, uh, plays the nickel position better than Verone, but Verone um, steps in and makes no drop off when, when he allows Javon to go to nickel and allow him to go to free safety kind of. Last year, how Ugo and Javon did. Uh, Ugo plays a great, played a great nickel, and him going to nickel and moving Vaughn back to sa safety just allowed our defense to have no drop off when we go nickel. And so then we could play against what the majority of the Pac 12 is, is a spread offense. So it just allows us to be able to do other things and uh, other people to step up and create depth in our in our defense. Mario has talked about how Verone's a pretty heady player, just a, a smart kid. Very but smart. Where, where have you kind of, like, when did you kind of start to feel like, okay, like this? I knew he was smart last year. Um, even though he didn't play, uh, he was always in our room because he was in the corners room last year. Um, he was always in our room, and he was just able to remember the same stuff that I would. And then when we were on the sideline, he was our coach too. So he wasn't just just a player. He was over there remembering two by two this and the three by one this. When number four is here, this is what they're running. Like he he, he remembers that and he's smart enough to to actually understand it and understand the film room. He, he understands the game isn't just play physically, he understands it's play mentally. Because me and him are both undersized to the average. So we have to not just be good with just our athletic ability, but also with our mind. Running nickel so much obviously opens up some vulnerabilities in, in other part, parts of defense. Why? How with five DPs on the field all the time, are you guys able to kind of neutralize you know, how other teams might be able to take advantage of that? Because uh, even though we're little, we're strong, we're physical, um, we're not scared of a fight. So when teams do decide to try to run on us when we're a nickel, we're able to, to set edges, we're able to, to get off blocks, we're able to, to be actually able to make the play because one, we already understand what the play is and where the play's going, but then next, we, we are too competitive, uh, allowing the other person in front of us to feel that they're stronger or better than us.